Okay, hi there, welcome to the second in our series of update videos looking at indirect taxes. We're going to spend a few minutes thinking about how you can use analysis diagrams to get great marks on assignments, assessments, looking at indirect taxes. How can we show the effect of an indirect tax using a supply and demand diagram? Well, let's think about the market. Here's the initial supply curve before the tax. I've drawn it as fairly elastic, upward sloping supply curve. Here's our demand curve for the product. The, the sort of private benefit curve of consumers, how much they're willing and able to pay. And of course, in a free market, there would be an equilibrium price of P1 and Q1. That's the pricing quantity that would happen in equilibrium in the absence of any government intervention. Of course, we're now going to introduce a tax to the market. Now, if we bring in a tax of, let's say, X pounds per unit, the supply curve shifts upwards by the amount of the tax. You see the producer, the supplier, is the agent that's being taxed here. So that vertical distance between the supply curves is the tax per unit. Vertical distance. Effectively, the supply curve has shifted to the left. It's actually gone up because costs per unit have increased. Now, the producer must bear the burden of the tax. They have to pay it unless they can shift or pass on the burden to the consumer. In equilibrium, the new price will be P2 and Q2 because there's been a fall in supply and the market now clears at a higher price P2 and a lower quantity bought and sold. There's going to be a contraction up the demand curve because the price has gone up. So that's the new price after the tax. And that's your basic tax diagram. A tax increases costs, raises prices and causes a contraction of demand. Now, the key thing is how do we show the burden of the tax? Who is paying the tax. Who's paying it? The producer or the consumer or perhaps both? Well, let's go back to the idea that the tax per unit is the vertical distance. The vertical distance, can you see that? Between the pre and the post tax supply curve. So the price has gone up from P1 to P2. That's not quite the same as the vertical distance between the two supply curves. So it looks as if the producer has managed to pass on most of the tax to the consumer. But there is a, a little bit, P1, P3, if you can see that, which the producer must pay. They still have to pay the tax, but the consumer has uh, had the burden passed on to it. So in fact, the consumer burden is the extent to which the producer passes on the price. Price goes up. The consumer burden is the area shown by the increase in price from P1 to P3, P2. The total tax per unit is P2, P3, P2, P3. So there is this area here. I've shaded that green. That's the producer burden of the tax. The government gets both shaded areas. They get the tax. It looks in this situation as if the consumer has paid most of the tax. When demand is highly price elastic, it's the case that the producer has to absorb most of the tax. Demand's price sensitive. Firms have less scope to increase prices after a tax. Contrast that with this diagram, where demand is more price inelastic. Low coefficient of elasticity. And in this situation, a producer can shift the burden of the tax to the consumer. And you can see here the price goes up. In the, on the example on the left hand side, the green area is less than the orange area. In the example on the right hand side, the green area is bigger than the orange area. So the burden shifts. Can you see that? As the elasticity of demand shifts as well. Now, these will be really good, clean diagrams to use in any assignment. You'll get good marks for this because everything's fully labeled and shaded and shown uh, very clearly. When will a producer, the supplier, when will a supplier pass on all of the burden of a tax to consumers? Can you have a think about that? In what situations might the producer be able to say, right, whatever the tax is, we are going to shift or pass on the burden to the consumer? What do you think? Well, one situation is when demand is not sensitive at all to the price. We call this perfectly inelastic demand. The coefficient of elasticity is zero here. And if you draw a demand curve as vertical, uh, demand won't change at all if the price rises. So if we put in a tax, there we go, there's the tax per unit, quite a hefty tax. All that happens is the price goes up from P1 to P2. Quantity doesn't change and the supplier can shift the entire 
burden of the tax onto the final consumer by increasing the price. So when elasticity is zero, price elasticity divided by zero, the consumer bears all the tax. In fact, it's also the case, and there, there, and there it's shown by the Shady diagram, it's also the case that if supply is perfectly elastic, the consumer pays the tax. So here's a situation where I've drawn a perfectly elastic supply curve. That means the marginal cost of every unit is the same. You can churn out whatever baked bean tins or bottles of Coke at, at the same price per unit. Here's our supply curve. And we've shifted it up by the tax. So we've added a tax per unit, which has increased the cost of suppliers. Put in a demand curve here. And therefore, we can show that the price initially was P1, Q1. After the tax, the quantity falls to Q2, the price goes up to P2. But can you see here that the price has gone up from P1 to P2, which is the distance of the tax? So in this situation, when supply is perfectly elastic, the consumer will also pay all of the tax. And that's often the case with mass-produced goods. Think about the sugar levy. You're producing bottles of Coca-Cola or Fanta or Dr. Pepper or something at the same marginal cost. If you put a tax on the producer, in most cases, they'll pass on the tax to the consumer. The impact on quantity depends on the elasticity of demand. In our next video, uh, we'll focus for a few minutes on ad valorem taxes.